Hi everyone! Welcome to another Secret Life of Bugs check-in. Now you may remember last month we celebrated Pollinator Week, and I'm happy to report that this month we have another thing to celebrate, and it's one of my favorites. As of a few days ago, it's officially Moth Week. And in honor of Moth Week, I'd like to take a couple of minutes just to talk about two of my favorite kinds of moth, the Polyphemus and the Luna. Both of these moths are members of the Saturnidae family, or giant silk moths. Saturnids are some of the largest and most impressive moths in the world, and the U.S. boasts several species of them, including the beautiful imperial moth, the royal walnut moth, and the largest moth in North America, the Cecropia. But of these spectacular specimens, the ones that you're most likely to see around here are the Luna and the Polyphemus. If you're lucky, you might see one of these gorgeous moths hanging out near a porch light or on the side of a building. If you're even luckier, you might be able to find some eggs or caterpillars and raise these moths yourself. It's a fascinating process, so let's take a look at their life cycle. Firstly, let's talk caterpillars. Now, Luna and Poly caterpillars are actually quite similar in appearance, and they're often mistaken for one another. If you were to find one of these caterpillars in the wild, it might be difficult to determine exactly which one you're looking at. But there are some differences to look for. Let's take a look at some of these caterpillars up close so you can see what I'm talking about. Now, I only have small Luna moths at the moment, but they'll get to be about the same size as this Polyphemus caterpillar eventually. Even now we can use them to see some of these differences though. One thing to look at is their heads. So you can see that these Lunas have green heads. Now Lunas, when they're bigger, can actually have green or brown heads, but a Polyphemus caterpillar, like this guy here, will always have that sort of chestnut brown head. The Polyphemus heads tend to be a bit bigger too. Another thing you can look at is the stripes on a Polyphemus caterpillar. You'll see these vertical stripes going down the length of the caterpillar. And at the top, you'll see these little spots that are kind of shiny. I call those their bike reflectors. Luna caterpillars don't have bike reflectors and they have a single horizontal stripe that goes down the length of the caterpillar. And if all else fails, if you look at the rear end of the caterpillar and you see a brown X, see if I can get it. If you see the brown X, you're looking at a poly. And if you don't see that, you're looking at a Luna. There are some differences in behavior between these two species as well. For example, in what the caterpillars like to eat. There is a great deal of overlap in what these caterpillars like to eat. Like most Saturnids, they're not very picky. Both of them will go for various trees, such as hickory, birch, beech, etc. But I do tend to find that they have almost favorites. Around here, I seem to find that the polys prefer oak, while the lunas prefer sweet gum. So that's what I usually feed them, respectively. If you are planning to raise either of these caterpillars, make sure you have access to a lot of host plant. As you can see, these caterpillars get pretty chunky, and in order to do so, they need to eat just about constantly over their three to four week development period. When they're ready, they'll start to build their cocoons, and here's where you'll notice another small difference between the polys and the lunas. Over here we have the poly cocoons, and then on this side we have the lunas. Now you may notice that the silk on the poly cocoons tends to be a bit thicker, and the cocoon tends to be just a little bit more of a solid construction. This means that the poly cocoons can stand on their own a bit better. So sometimes you'll see poly cocoons hanging from the trees without any other covering. And pro tip, this actually makes them pretty easy to find in the winter when there's no leaves on the trees. And that being said, both polys and lunas do prefer to wrap their cocoons in leaves. With the lunas in particular, you pretty much always see them drop off of the tree and make their cocoons in the leaf litter underneath. So that's another good reason why they tell you to leave your leaves. Both of these guys will then pupate inside of their silk cocoon and they'll be there for about two weeks, assuming it's not late fall. If it is late fall, they'll be there all winter. Either way, they're on their way to becoming a moth inside. Now when the moth emerges, it has to act fast. They can't eat as adults. In fact, they don't even have a mouth. So it's a good thing they did all of that munching as caterpillars. And between you and me, even if they had a mouth, they get more important things on their mind, namely finding a mate. Adult Saturnids are fine-tuned for finding mates. 
Because they're active at night, their strategy relies more on smell than on sight. You'll notice in this pair of luna moths that one of them has much bigger antennae. The antennae are organs that moths use to pick up scents, and in Saturnids, they're usually much bigger in the males. This is because the female's job is to stay more or less in one spot and emit a cloud of pheromones. The male will use his big poofy antennae to pick up those scents and follow them to the female, sometimes from up to miles away. This strategy is true for most Saturnids, so if you find a big moth, you can usually tell whether you're looking at a male or a female by looking at the antennae. When the moths do meet up, they'll mate, and then the female will fly off to deposit her eggs. If all goes well, another generation of little green caterpillars will hatch out and start munching away, beginning the cycle all over again. Thank you so much for joining me for the Secret Life of Bugs check-in. If you'd like to meet these caterpillars and moths in person, you can stop by the Secret Life of Bugs table. Note that the Secret Life of Bugs schedule has changed. We are now open 10 to 2, Thursday through Sunday. See you later, everybody, and happy Moth Week! Hey, everybody! This will be our last weekly garden check-in. Please be sure to check our website for future in-person programming and events. We hope that you enjoy checking in with us each week um, over this past year. And thank you so much for checking in.